We have now come to this section on quadratic inequalities. Now, I'm sure you can solve basic inequality question like this. Okay, simply bring this negative x over to the left hand side becomes a plus, so you have 2x greater than 4, right? And therefore x would be greater than 2. So this kind of uh, linear inequality shouldn't be too much of a headache for you. So how about an inequality involving quadratic expression like this one? Now, of course you must know that you can't solve this quadratic inequality the way you solve your linear inequality, right? You cannot just um, make x subject easily in a quadratic expression like this. So, how do we do it then? Well, simple. All we have to do is to factorize. Okay, every time you see a quadratic inequality like this, you factorize. Alright, and uh, in this factorization, you will get x plus 1, x minus 3. After you factorize, this is where many, many people tend to make careless mistakes. Okay, so you have to be very, very careful. And as well, there are many methods, in fact, a total of three different methods to do from this uh, step on. Okay, so I'll teach you the, cur uh, the curve sketching method. Right, which I find is the most useful method because it can uh, be useful all the way until uh, your A levels. Okay, so how do we uh, continue from here after you factorize? Very simple. After you factorize, now what are these? You should know that these are called the roots. Okay, these are also the factors, right? So you know that there is a root at x equals to negative 1 and there is a root at x equals to positive 3. The next thing that you must look out for would be what kind of curve is this? Is this a minimum curve or is this a maximum curve? So by looking at the coefficient of the x square, which is a positive 1, you should know that this is a happy face curve, right? Which is a minimum curve this way. So all you have to do now is to draw I mean, to sketch out the shape of the curve. Now, it doesn't have to be accurate, okay? In fact, it doesn't even have to have the x, y axis, all right? The x axis is there because you need to know uh, where it, it will intersect the x axis, okay? Notice that I didn't, I, I didn't even um, put in the y axis, okay? So this is enough, all right, to help us solve this quadratic inequality. How do we solve the quadratic inequality next? Well. Next thing we must figure out is this, okay, the sign here. Now this is a greater than sign. So what this tells us is that this quadratic expression has to be greater than zero. So this quadratic expression is plotted into this curve, all right? Now this curve represents this quadratic expression here. So when will this curve be greater than zero? Well, the curve will be greater than zero only for this part and this part, isn't it? Okay, for between minus one to three, all right, the curve will be underneath. It will be negative. So you don't want the part of the curve to be negative. You want the positive part of the curve, right? So the x value, okay, will of course be x less than negative one or x more than 3. Okay, so this will be your final answer. This will be the answer to this quadratic inequality. Simple? Well, I hope so. Let's take a look at one more. Alright. Now, this quadratic inequality here, alright, as you may notice, the first thing that catches your eye must be, you know, this negative 2. This is a maximum quadratic expression. So the first thing that I would do is I'll multiply throughout by negative 1. So that I'll end up with a positive 2x plus x minus 3. Less than or equal to 0. Okay? Because every time you multiply throughout by a negative number, you have to change the sign of the inequality. And why would I want to multiply throughout by negative 1? Well, it's a personal preference actually because I find a lot easier to factorize with a positive 
2x square okay but again if you think that you can handle negative 2x square to factorize it by all means go ahead okay as well I want to highlight to you or to remind you that whenever you multiply throughout by negative number you will have to change the inequality sign so when do we change inequality sign well like I mentioned earlier we will change the inequality sign when we multiply or divide throughout by a negative number now this is a very simple concept to understand for example now all of us know that 3 will be greater than 1 isn't it now let's say I were to multiply throughout by negative 1 throughout so my positive 3 will become negative 3 and my negative 1 okay 1 will become negative 1 so is it still correct to say that well negative 3 is greater than negative 1 well obviously this is wrong right so therefore that that is the reason why we have to change the sign whenever we multiply or divide throughout by a negative number case number two when we change the inequality sign will be when we reciprocate both sides alright again as an example for example I have 3 greater than 1 isn't it okay now let's say I were to reciprocate both sides so my 3 will become 1 over 3 and my 1 will still become 1 over 1 which is 1 so I reciprocated both sides can I still say that you know 1 third is greater than 1 so obviously again this is wrong isn't it so there are only two ways or two scenarios whereby you have to change your inequality sign alright and these two are listed out here alright so you may want to make a note somewhere to remind yourself of the situation whereby you have to change your inequality sign so let's get back to our question here we go so we are now faced with this quadratic inequality so what's the first step we do well we factorize isn't it so we factorize we will get um, 2x plus 3 and of course x minus 1 alright being less than or equal to 0 so the next step after we factorize will be to draw okay to sketch so this will be a still a positive uh, minimum curve okay so we draw we know that it will cut at negative 3 over 2 and it will cut the x-axis at positive 1 now we are interested in the parts of the curve that is less than or equal to 0 okay so it's simply look for the part that's underneath the x-axis so underneath the x-axis will be here isn't it okay so it's not that difficult to identify I think so therefore the range of our values of x will be between minus 3 over 2 to positive 1 so our x value will be between minus 3 over 2 to positive 1 so this will be our answer now I mentioned earlier on that after factorizing is where many people will start to make careless mistakes so let's take a look at one of the most common mistakes that people uh, always make okay so hopefully after now after I tell you about this careless mistake that people make you won't be faced in the same situation with the same kind of mistake so let us just take this um, question here as an example now x plus 1 x minus 3 greater than 0 okay now now that you have learned it well okay you should know that at after this factorization step you should be drawing the curve okay and then identify whether you're looking for the positive part or the negative part of the curve but what many people tend to forget okay or tend to do is this okay they would think that well, okay so I have factorized it and this is x plus 1 x minus 3 is like greater than 0 ah this is simple I've seen this somewhere before so well x plus 1 greater than 0 or x minus 3 greater than 0 so therefore x it will be greater than negative 1 or x has to be greater than well positive 3 so of course the person who come up with this solution okay is not going to get a full marks alright now why is this wrong why is this wrong 
very simple. Now this is wrong because this is an inequality, it is not an equal sign. Now if this were to be an equal sign, then his working would be totally correct. Okay, because all of us know that Okay, let me find some space here. Okay, great. Alright, now all of us know that when we have x plus 1 multiplied by x minus 3 equals to 0, yes, indeed, our x will be equal to negative 1 or positive 3. This is absolutely correct. But this is only correct because this is 0. I mean, this is equal to 0. Right, but it doesn't work for inequalities like this. Okay? Now, Anyway, the answers that you have here um, is not going to make any sense. I mean, think about it. You're talking about an x value that's greater than negative 1 or an x value that's greater than positive 3. So if you are greater than positive 3, you are obviously greater than po negative 1. Right? So, so this thing, this solution here is not making any sense. And therefore, uh, this is another reason why it is wrong. Okay, so do not learn whatever that's in the rate. Okay, it is here because I want you to realize what many people tend to do. Right, so now you learn it well and you remember it. Every time you face with a quadratic inequality, the first thing you do, you factorize. Okay, and then you sketch the curve. After you sketch the curve, you identify the parts whereby uh, you, you need for the solution, whether you need the positive part, which will be the part above the x-axis, or when you need the negative part, which is the part that's less than zero and the part that's underneath the x-axis.